Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Upwell the Podcast. I'm Sarah, this is Katie, and we're happy to have you. And Sarah's ponytail. I know, it's rocking. <laughs> I we're, love it. We were talking, I'm like, is this a thing anymore? Like, early 2000s, this was like a style. Hoop earrings and a high pony. Uh, and as soon as mine's long again, we might be the Bobsy twins. Oh, that's here. perfect. With little... If people know who that is. Yeah, right? I know. Yeah. But I'm like, is this still a style? It's your style. And that's what's <laughs> important. And that's all that matters. I'm just grabbing stuff, you guys. We have like a little setup behind the scenes where we've got some some jewelry and just some random stuff. So that way, like today, here's a little insider tidbit. When we record multiple episodes, we don't want to look exactly the same. So we just kind of change it up. And I'm yep. like, well ponytail and earrings it is and then I didn't know if I was stuck in the early 2000s or if this is appropriate no I'm digging it I like it that's thing. all that matters because I'm here with you and I'm the only one that well leave us a comment and let me know <laughs> if this is like age appropriate or if I'm stuck in a decade you know ago I don't know. she's almost 35 so I know there's Putting no such age thing on as blast. age appropriate really right no you're only as old as you feel so, funny story though, really quick, before we start this episode, um, we were talking behind the scenes while we were getting ready and we were talking about getting stolen <laughs> because we were talking about not answering our phones and how panicky our significant others get if we're not in immediate communication. And Katie told me the funniest story she's got to share. Gotta share. So, I was out for a walk and... Um, I was, you know, I had told, I had told him when, uh, when I turned around to come back home, I would, you know, send him a text or give him a call. Well, I'd gotten to a point on my route where I was on a, a like a pedestrian bridge over an interstate. So it was really loud and that was going to be my turnaround point. And so he called while I was there and I didn't hear my phone ring. And so instead of like waiting a few minutes and calling back, <laughs> When I called him back, when I know, when as I was turning around and I realized, you know, he had called and I called him back, he had hopped on a bike, had a knife, like had popped in a pocket, like because he's got some legit pocket knives too. So he, he had a knife in his teeth on a bike, like like a Rambo on a bike, to come in to find me because he thought I had been kidnapped and was just. I'm but, just picturing him riding next to the interstate with a knife in his mouth, like feverishly on his bike, and I could not get that image out of my head. And, and then, he's just, like, if 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 anybody were to mess with me, like, you would meet the wrath of of him, and it would you wouldn't be. That's what we were saying before the show. I'm like, yeah, I'm pretty sure if I got stolen, it would be full on Liam Neeson mode. Yeah, my oh, husband sure. would be Liam Neeson. He would find you. He would <laughs> destroy you. So yes. don't try to take me. And then the other part of the conversation was, I don't I'd think anybody send, would take us. Send her back. It would be like, we don't want her. She's going to talk our ears off about health food and astrology. Do you know that kale is bad for you? <laughs> I would. And then they would just drop me off on the side of the road. Be like, all right, next. <laughs> it's the best escape plan. Absolutely. Just be an obnoxious know-it-all. <laughs> and they will drop you back off. Where but they, you're not where an you obnoxious know-it-all. I know, but I could totally pretend. If I was trying to get my way out of the backseat of a, of a car, if I was a victim, I would annoy, annoy them until they let me go. Really? Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know what? Probably so would I. So would I. I, think I would ask perfect. them what their favorite song was. What's your favorite color? What's your sign? <laughs> What's your sign? When's your birthday? I'll never forget your birthday because I, I don't ever forget birthdays. I know everybody's well, birthday. If you tell me your birthday, I will remember it. If, if, you're, if you're somebody that makes an impact on my life and you tell me your birthday, I will remember it forever. I'm the opposite. I better write that shit down because I won't remember nope. my own birthday. I know everybody's birthday. I barely know mine. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean on a kids from grade school. Yeah, like some of you, if you are somebody that I went to grade school with and are listening to this, I might know when your birthday is. I read, man. With, with dates, <laughs> yes. I love it. With dates, I yes. And I wish I, it was with cards. I would go to Vegas and enjoy myself. No kidding. And I'm the opposite. I mean, I have to have everybody's phone number saved in my phone. I don't remember. Mm -mm. Oh, that's a funny story because my significant other actually doesn't know my phone number. We've been together yeah, almost seven it. years. Not, I don't know your significant others. Se I know mine. Seven years. And he's like, what's your phone number? I'm like, really, baby? It's saved in the phone. He's like, it's in my phone. It just hits call. I know. I know. Well, that was a completely 
unrelated topic. <laughs> but topic. I loved it. I hope yeah. you enjoyed every second of that conversation. We're going to keep it. Normally we would edit that out, but we're happy to have you. We're happy to have, we're happy to have that one today. <laughs> um, today's conversation is a great one. I am really pumped to talk about it because I feel like we both deal with it a lot, um, not only in our personal lives, but with our in our profession with our clients. So And so do you. Yes. Everyone does. We're talking <laughs> stress, baby. Stress maneuvering is what I'm going to call it. I like that. Some people might call it stress management. I'm going to call it stress maneuvering. I love it because, like you said, like we already said, everybody deals with it. Mm-hmm. Every single day we are bombarded with stressors, whether that's in our personal mm-hmm. lives, our professional lives, our relationships. There's always some stress. All the time, no matter what. Even if, even if you're the calmest person in the world, you have to be ready at any given moment for a, uh, I don't want to use the B word, um, but I'm going to say a bomb to be dropped on you yeah. at any given time, you know, to, for something bad to, to be, ha- to, to just completely make a muck of your world. Yeah, for sure. And I think knowing the difference between reducing stress and becoming resilient to stress mm-hmm. is going to be a really key takeaway from today's conversation because I think the emphasis is put on reducing stress in your life and we've just so blatantly said you really can't I mean you can't run away from it you can't hide from it you can't necessarily eliminate all the things that cause you stress if your kids are stressful you can't go sell them if your job is stressful you can't probably just walk out you know so all these things that may cause stress in your life you have to learn to manage it instead of eliminate it yeah, one you'd go to jail and one you'd probably be free. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. that's true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I just think that there is so many tools available to us to help us um, become more resilient, to manage our stress instead of looking to eliminate it. There, I mean, there are there are opportunities where you can eliminate it. Well, I think a lot of our stress is brought on by ourselves. Uh, <laughs> That goes without saying. Yeah. That goes without saying. We we spend so much time in a state of worry, in a state of thinking about things that aren't happening, that aren't going to happen, or that they might happen, but they haven't happened yet, that we spend all, I don't, I don't want to say all, but a, a mass majority of our conscious time in that state of worry, thinking about are my kids going to get into a good school? Am I going to have enough money to do this? Is you, Am I ever going to lose the weight? Am I, you know, that a, a, a big one is like weather. Oh, yeah. Like, if a tornado's coming at you, you're not going to stop it. Mm-hmm. Like, not to say that there isn't going to be a sense of worry there, obviously, because that's that's more instinctual, so that's probably a bad example. But, like, you know, there, there's just things that, if it's out of your control it's out of your control yeah and there's so many mental stressors like that Mm -hmm. that so much of it is created up here Mm -hmm. you know it's not a physical stressor and you think about like the way humans are created you know if you get sweaty or your heart beats really fast it's usually because something just caused some fear in you you or you perspire when you're inspired I know like my (laughs) My inspirational quote from a few episodes ago. I perspire when I'm inspired. Sorry, I had to throw that in. I digress. (laughs) Continue, ma'am. But, you know, long ago, humans probably had to worry about getting eaten by a saber-toothed tiger. You know, that's obviously long, long ago. But we have certain stress responses for a reason, but those are actual physical, real stresses happening in real time when I think in modern day a lot of our stress is caused by like you said worry fear anger anxiety things are ruminating in our head yeah the the stresses that are instinctual are usually for survival yeah if you're like there there's that that instinctual fear of you know I'm getting hit by a car yes if you if you put your hand close to something that's hot you're going to pull it away like that's those are those are instinctual fears and that's not the type of stress that we're Focusing on today, we're talking about more of the ones that we bring on ourselves um, or that we allow other people to bring into our realm. Yeah, and I first want to kick off the conversation really talking about good stress versus bad stress because I think the word stress itself has a negative connotation Mm -hmm. to it because people hear stress and they feel stressed, right? Mm -hmm. And they think it's something that's so, so bad. But 
really there are you stressors. Those are good stressors. Mm -hmm. Those are things that you physically or mentally challenge yourself with to make you stronger, to make you more resilient. So this can be exercise, this can be fasting, this can be hot and cold therapies. You know, there's different things that are a challenge to your mind and body that cause a little bit of stress so that on the other side of the experience, you are stronger for it. Yeah, you come out better Yeah, for, for having done it. Yeah, so those are types of you stressors, you know, so it's still causing the actual stress response to your body, but it's building your stress resilience. Whereas the bad stress, like you were mm -hmm. talking about, is more on the mental side. And exposing yourself to those good stressors actually has the ability to eliminate the bad stressors. Yeah. Which is, you know, but it, that, it's a matter of putting yourself and doing the action. Yeah, yeah, and that's the hardest part, right? Mm -hmm. Physically doing it right when you don't want to. Yeah, and then the bad, the bad stressor is when you're in de-stress. Distress. Distress. Yeah. Distress. Whoops. Either way, distress. Distress. Potato, potato. But yeah, I mean, think about some of the tomato, tomato. some of the way. Yeah, <laughs> either vegetable. Think about the, some of the ways that you could potentially be in distress in your day-to-day mm -hmm. -day life. You know, maybe you're running late and you're stuck in traffic. That's distress. You know, there's not a whole lot you can do about it, but you start worrying about everything that dominoes from that current situation. You start thinking in the future. Example. Go ahead. Airplanes. Ooh. When you're at an airport good. and your flight is delayed... Have you ever been around massive amounts of just ragingly pissed off people? Oh, yeah. Because their flight is delayed. Can't do anything about Can't it. Can't do anything about it. Like, what are you going to do? Yeah. I mean, get your pilot's license and go buy a private jet and fly yourself. If And even then, you might still be delayed. <laughs> because yeah. there's a lot of things that are out Weather of their patterns. control. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, but that, that to me is a, is a big one when you just mentioned, you know, when you're stuck in traffic. I think, I think everybody, and I'm a firm believer, though, that just about everybody, when they walk into an airport, they lose about 50 IQ points. Like, <laughs> right off the top. Probably. Right, and that's just, that's just the bare, like, yeah. bare minimum right off the top. Mm -hmm. So you add that in conjunction to the things that you can't control and getting overly worked up about it. You know, me, I'm going to go wander around the airport. I'm going to yeah. go to a bookstore. I'm going to be Same. looking at the magazines. I might go get something to eat. I might, you know. Yeah. And I, I think you hit the nail on the head with talking about what you can control. Mm -hmm. Because when you focus on that, your stress levels are immediately reduced. Because mm -hmm. instead of putting all of your energy and focus into the things that you literally can't do anything about, mm -hmm. and all you're doing is creating a stressful situation in your head, mm -hmm. if you can focus on the things that you can do in the moment, mm -hmm. you're immediately relieved of that stress. And I understand that you might be worked up because you spent a lot of money on a trip and you're gonna miss out on X, Y, and Z because your flight's delayed or you might miss a connecting flight and this, that, and the other, but again, there are certain times where things are out of your control, and I, too, am a firm believer. I had a very wise lady once tell me that there are no accidents in life, that everything happens and is happening how it's supposed to, yeah. so be thankful for that. Yeah, I agree. And I know you're watching. I know you're watching the person uh -oh. that, that told me that. Mm -hmm. Aw. <laughs> I love that. I love that. But, yeah, I think going back to all of, you know, creating stress for ourselves, I think it's so important to focus on what you can do in the moment, mm -hmm. what you do have control over, and that just being a way to reduce stress. Instead of putting all of this emphasis on reducing stress in your life, you know, trying to eliminate it, trying mm -hmm. to get rid of it, trying to find mm -hmm. ways to, to not have excess stress, mm -hmm. there are obviously things that you could get rid of or eliminate mm -hmm. to help combat some of that, mm -hmm. at least from having too much stress put on yourself. I think a lot of people are, you know, yes, men and women, and they overcommit mm -hmm. to things that causes stress. So, you know, you can create boundaries. You can go back and watch that episode. Um, but that's another kind of way to help eliminate stress. But again, just focusing on what, what do you have control over in the moment that is going to give you power and control in the situation and hopefully eliminate some stress. One of the biggest stress maneuvers is learning how to say no. 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 And no. Without an explanation. Yeah. Without an explanation. 
Like, if you can't, if you can't make an engagement just because you don't want to, and you just say no. And and one of my biggest pet peeves personally is when people are like, "I'm sorry," but it me. <laughs> that's me. I that that's. I, I have started more sentences in my life, and I feel like in my 30s I'm not as bad. But I've started most sentences with the words, I'm sorry, as a precursor. Like, to whatever I'm about to say. Even though it's not something that is negative or bad or mean or nothing that I had to apologize for. <laughs> but in my mind, it softened the blow. I know. No. I know. Not no. anymore. No. I've gotten much better. No. I've gotten much better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, That that's... I used to, like, bump into mannequins at stores and turn around and say, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's just the person I was. Oh, boy. Okay. I've gotten better. That's I've gotten better. I didn't know that. I yeah. Didn't know that. I am a very, I was a very uh, apologetic <laughs> for no for no reason. <laughs> but learning how to say no is going to be one of your, your biggest uh, stress maneuvers yeah. in, in, in navigating uh, stressful situations. Yeah. Is no without an explanation. You're, you don't owe an explanation to anybody. Yep. And outside of controlling what you can control, I do want to give people some actionable things, mm -hmm. some actual scientific studied things that help reduce, I don't want to say reduce, I don't like that. We already talked about that. I want to give you steps or things that you can do to help manage your stress mm -hmm. or to help you become more resilient to stress. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to name off a couple of our favorite things that we do personally that we recommend to our clients. Um, and everybody's going to have their own practices. Mm -hmm. You know, it's very personalized and individual to you. So you have to find the things that make you feel good, that help you kind of feel a little bit more grounded and centered and focused and not so worried and anxious and fearful all the time. So we're just going to share a few of our favorites and hopefully it inspires you to either use these or try them or come up with some of your own. Uh I would say my top three are uh, walking in nature. Love it. Um, petting my dogs. Like rubbing my dog's ears because the ears are the softest part. Mm -hmm. on the, it just that is so like I'm instantly just like. <sighs> and I would and say. they are too. Yes. Yes. And I would say number three is uh, breathing. Uh, a couple of techniques that I like to do is box breathing, um, which is four breaths in, hold for four seconds, four breaths or four. For, uh, four seconds breathing out, hold for four seconds, and then you just go around in the box and do the box breathing. Or I like to do what's called um, cyclical breathing, yeah. where it's like in and out, and it's a very rhythmic mm -hmm. thing, and it's almost like a wave in your body. Um, those are probably my two favorite techniques for, love, for breathing. I love that. And you've, I'm sure you've heard of four, seven, eight breathing. Yes. That's one of mm -hmm. my favorites because there is some science out there. It's actually really interesting about Low, lowering your levels of cortisol, which mm -hmm. is your fight or flight hormone response, just by having your exhales be longer than your inhales. Mm -hmm. So that is, it's really, really interesting stuff because there's so much you can physiologically control mm -hmm. by using your breath. Mm -hmm. So I love your top three and going back to, they're also in my list too, so I just want to expound a little bit, but nature is magical. Mm -hmm. You guys, when I say that, I'm not just blowing smoke like nature you can be in the trees be by the water be with the earth and the ground and you actually absorb molecules in, in a different charge they're called negative ions, ions. Mm -hmm. so you actually do change your your mindset your physiological your, your makeup state mm -hmm. yeah just by being outside and you I'm sure you can feel it even if you didn't necessarily know but if you go outside middle of the day, you know, during your work day, you immediately feel relieved. Probably some of because you're not working in that moment, right. but also, you know, just getting outside. And I think that's another reason people like vacations and getting away. Obviously, you're more relaxed because you're not in the day-to-day -day activities, but most of the time people are outside. People are at the beach. People are hiking in the mountains. People are doing something outside. So that's why you feel just so refreshed and so good. Nature, um, if you go on like a walk or a hike with me, um, I will make you more than likely stop to listen to the trees mm -hmm. and to, to like listen to what they're saying. And so many people will look at me like I'm batshit crazy. 
the trees are talking to you. And if you are willing to listen, they can tell you so much. I'm like that with water. I'm yeah. definitely. Mm-hmm. And that's funny because you're an earth sign and I'm a water sign. So that's. I am not an earth sign. Yeah, you are. I am a Pisces, young lady. Oh, yeah. No, you're rising. My rising's in earth. Mm-hmm. That's, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. Anyway, I knew that. I know her big three. <laughs> Going back to being stolen. <laughs> that's your big three. Um, and back to the animal piece. I think that's such an important one, too, because animals are also medicine. Mm-hmm. Animals are healing. I mean, that's why people have therapy dogs, right, mm-hmm. to help them reduce stress or deal with certain emotions or overwhelm you know obviously there's medical reasons people have dogs too but um there's equine therapy Mm -hmm. too that's a huge popular Mm -hmm. thing there's goat yoga you know Mm -hmm. where goats are present or cats you know there's just animals have such a calming effect i think on humans yeah um a couple others um and i on, on our little list here um organizing a space i am very, very much an outer order equals inner calm. 100%. Person. Um, and when my outer world is out of order, um, everything stresses me out. Yeah. Every, my, my, stress, my stress response is through the roof with just, I mean, it's ridiculous. And I actually clean when I'm angry. Me too. Me too. It's a very, I'm an angry cleaner. It's mm-hmm. very cathartic. Mm-hmm. to to clean your space and I think it can be used as as a way to kind of manage your stress in the moment but I agree with what you said about your surroundings I love the saying as without so within mm-hmm. I think it's actually as within so without mm-hmm. but it goes both directions it goes both ways mm-hmm. if your external environment is in chaos so are you with it yes and vice versa I actually can tell like if I'm stressed out quite often my space reflects how I mm-hmm. feel inside. You know, my house won't be as clean or my my computer files aren't as mm-hmm. organized. So I think it's so important to kind of correlate external with internal mm-hmm. and knowing that you have the ability to kind of manage some of your stress and calm yourself just by arranging or organizing or cleaning something in your external environment. Another one is spending time with people that bring you joy. Mm. Um, like a warm... Friday hug. afternoon. So we <laughs> I said a warm hug. She said Friday afternoon. Well, we record on Fridays. So oh. let's, you know, like Fridays, uh, Friday afternoons are some of my favorite time because we hang Me out too. and, you know, like it's just, we laugh so much. Like if we could just set up a camera the whole time we I are think here. We should. I think we're going to. We're just, you could see everything behind the scenes. The amount that we laugh mm-hmm. is hilarious yeah. actually and even beyond you know obviously it's going to feel good and like reduce stress when you're around people that you enjoy their company that you can mm-hmm. connect with but i think too just being able to verbalize your stresses to mm-hmm. another human that understands and even if they don't under even if they don't understand they're compassionate toward you mm-hmm. i think that is so important to have relationships like that mm-hmm. you know and whether it's one person two people whatever that looks like i think you have to have those people, those relationships that you can feel less stressed after you leave their presence. Yeah. And then there's the other basics, you know, exercise, yoga, um, journaling. Those are all all ways to, you know, relieve stress and kind of, you know, decompress and get what might be in your body out. In your body. Thank you. That was exactly like what I was going to say is getting whatever is inside of you out of you. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. why I think movement, whether that is walking, mm-hmm. exercising, yoga, breathing, mm-hmm. writing, journaling, mm-hmm. coloring, you mm-hmm. know, like those adult coloring books or drawing, if you're mm-hmm. a doodler, I think that's just so important because a lot of times stress too is a very energetic thing. Mm-hmm. Like it can get stuck. It's like energy. Yeah. It, energy gets stuck in your body and then there's a there's an overabundance or a buildup of it and you have to exert it somehow so that you can free yourself of it. So I think any yeah. anything that is within if you can get it out somehow I think that's crucial I also and the next one I'm going to suggest is in small doses um I have a game that I like to play on my phone it's like a um do you remember the highlight magazines oh I loved those magazines (laughs) when you were a kid yeah I wore my hair like this yeah (laughs) exactly 
So you remember, like, they'd have, like, the full spreads and you'd have to find all, love the, it. all the things? Or, like, Where's Waldo? I love that, too. Correct. So I have this app on my phone that I just found, like, a week ago. And it gives you 171 things that you have to find. Oh, I like that. In the picture. Hidden but pictures. Is that what they're called? Hidden pictures? It's called scavenger hunt is, okay. is, is what it is. But uh, if I am feeling just... Like I need, like I need a mental break. Like a sensory overload. Yes, I will open that up. I'll play, and again, small doses because I have found myself a couple of times I, where I'm looking and looking, and I look at the clock, and I'm like, "Oh crap, that much time's gone by." Shit, the bed. It was March when I sat down, <laughs> and it's July. <laughs> exactly. So small doses with that, but little things like that can be really helpful too to kind of just give you a mental break to, you know, yeah, do yeah. something that's kind of fun. I, I was just going to say, fun mm -hmm. is number one. If you find yourself feeling stressed out mm -hmm. all the time, you're not having enough fun. You right. Know, joy is meant, is a human like desire for mm -hmm. a reason. We seek joy, we seek pleasure, we seek fun. And if you're in a constant state of distress, you got to find some way to have some more fun. Mm -hmm. I agree. No matter what that is. I agree. I mean, maybe not like... Mm -hmm something that's detrimental to your physical health but right. there are lots and lots of things you can do um and I know we've talked about this in other episodes too but I want to circle back a little bit about uh instant dopamine hits that might make you feel like you are running away from that stress or it's not impacting you in the moment yeah that's why I said the game on the phone is is very small doses yeah so <laughs> talk about some other things maybe that we think are relieving stress but probably not doing us any good scrolling on your phone yes scrolling the apps whether it's the book or the gram you're you're not you're not helping yourself yep netflix binging right mm -hmm. up there with it yeah I, you can really really anything that's on a screen for a long amount mm -hmm. of time is probably not great it can actually cause more stress mm -hmm. internally mm -hmm. in the long run whether it's because you're doomsday scrolling and now you're reading things about the end of the world or mm -hmm. you're comparing yourself to someone else that is where you want to be, whether that's the way they look or the amount of money that they're making. It's like there's so many ways that you could potentially stress yourself out even worse. And I know with me, I really don't watch a lot of TV, but if I do sit down and like watch a movie or watch TV, sometimes I'm more stressed out because I didn't accomplish anything then. You know, like yes. after it's over, I'm like, now I'm really stressed because I had had all these things that I needed to get done today or I wanted to do for mm -hmm. myself and then I didn't do them and now my stress level has escalated skyrocketed yeah. yeah I think the last big one that I do is I meditate every day Love. um so and that one uh that's been a game changer I recently just hit um on May 17th um I use a little app to track my my meditations I just hit five years straight wow. of daily meditation mm -hmm. That's amazing. And that's I something I want to deepen my practice in. Um, I It's on again, off again for me. But I will say I walk daily and mm -hmm. I do, I try to treat that time as a moving meditation. Yeah. You know, I mm -hmm. really do try to use my five senses, drop into my body, really be present in the moment. Mm -hmm. So even though I'm moving my body and I'm not sitting completely still, which I do want to, mm -hmm. I really want to love that practice and get into it because there are a lot of mm -hmm. huge benefits of stillness and silence. We know that from Katie, but, <laughs> um, but yeah, meditation I think is so important. And I think people are scared if they don't have a, a basic meditation practice or they come up with all these reasons why they, why they can't, you know, I can't sit still or I don't have that much time. What was that? I think, was it Gandhi maybe that said, if you don't, he, he who says he doesn't have 20 minutes to meditate needs to meditate for an hour. Yeah, it was either him or Asa or um, someone. Rumi we'll have to, or somebody. We'll have to look yeah, it up. but it's it's true. It's like if you think you're too busy or your mind is that scattered that you don't feel like you have ten minutes to sit still or ten minutes to walk and not think about everything else. It's like you probably need more of it because your brain is just running the show. Well, I actually suggest to people if you're new to meditation, one of the best things you can do is actually start with breath work instead yeah. of meditation. Um, I think of the body connection, the body connection. Um, and cause a lot of people have a hard time focusing on their breath without controlling their breath. I know I do. 
I'll be, I'll admit it. Like the second I realize, the second the, the thought clicks in my head, like, oh yes, you're meditating. That is the, the nanosecond that I start forcing the breath in and out. Yeah. So actually doing breath work is more meditative than actually sitting and just trying to sit in stillness and trying to, you know, just not, fo- think, n- about not think about anything. Yes. Yeah. And even for me, meditation, I actually, I have switched my meditation practice to actually, I bring a topic to my focus just gonna say that. and I meditate on that idea or that specific thing yep. instead of trying to not think about anything. I have found that that's more profound for me. Yeah. I think, I think especially as a beginning meditator, it's, it's going to be easier or simpler to put a focus on put a focus on something instead of trying to focus on nothing because the purpose of meditation is just to bring to focus something Mm -hmm. and not I think so many people are like okay I sit on this pillow and I just think about nothing well not really you're just trying to get your brain not to think about the hundred things it's trying to Mm -hmm. think about and just focus on one whether that's your breath or a topic and I love that you said that because a lot of times that's how I will shift into my meditation is I'll ask myself a question, I'll have a journal prompt, mm-hmm. you know, but it will get me just to focus on this one one thought, whether that's for three minutes, five minutes, ten minutes, as long as it needs to be. But I think that is such a helpful tool. And, and last but not least, since I have been doing this for quite some time, um, the last one that I would actually suggest is a heartbeat meditation. Um, and it's not it's different than a body scan. Um, a heartbeat meditation is literally sitting in in stillness, but bringing your attention to your heartbeat. And I find that bringing your attention to your heartbeat as opposed to bringing your attention to your breath, your breath you can control. Your breath, yes, it's involuntary, but it can be voluntary. It's one of those things that it's both. Mm -hmm. With your heartbeat, your heartbeat is much, much more involuntary. Yes, there are times where you can change it, um, but it's an involuntary response. So just being sitting and sitting witness to it and feeling it in the different parts of your body, whether that's your heart, whether that's your fingertips, whether that's your throat, your temples, your, your belly button, your, your toes, your feet, wherever the, you know, like they might check your pulse. You can actually bring your focus to those areas. And that is hands down one of the most relaxing practices I have ever done yeah and unknowingly I kind of do that at night honestly Mm -hmm. because like when I lay in bed just to help myself relax I just put both hands Mm -hmm. on my heart and I really do just Mm -hmm. like let all the muscles in my body relax and I just focus on my chest rising and falling and Mm -hmm. feeling my heartbeat under Mm -hmm. my hands and when I when I do that I need to be more uh, consistent with it because Mm -hmm. I fall asleep so much easier Mm -hmm. I feel so much more relaxed and I think I'm, I must be achieving a deeper sleep because mm-hmm. usually the next morning if I've done that, I feel more refreshed. Do you know that the, when, the, when like the age old tale of like, oh, I can't sleep, they tell you to count sheep? Yeah. It's basically what you're doing is you're just counting your heartbeats. Your heartbeats. Huh. <laughs> Learn something new. Learn something new. I have one more thing because I do, I love all of the stress <coughs> management and stress reduction techniques that we have talked about, but I think doing or reading something mm. uplifting mm-hmm. is really important. And again, this probably goes back to finding joy and having more fun, but if your constant is stress, mm-hmm. like if that is very constant for you, because things are hard right now, I understand, mm-hmm. you know, money and family things and the world is crazy our lives are crazy and Mm -hmm. busy and filled so sometimes you can't like we said you can't get away from it but if you can find things that uplift you by doing them or reading them or seeing them whether that's people you know I'm a big fan of reading I love reading personal development um, but you could read fiction you know it can be a happy good story that makes you feel good or removes you from Mm -hmm. the stress in your mind for a little bit so I think reading can be a really powerful thing because it does take your mind into somewhere else because you're putting your again putting your focus on on something else and making it something that makes you feel good is super important and again I think I agree uh there is a fine line with that though if you're spending too much time in that in that kind of imaginary world and using it more as distraction as opposed and, and avoidance of yeah. 
of real life, but uh, using um, even podcasts, listening to podcasts can be another yes. thing to where it's, you know, you're, you're listening to it, you're getting something positive, you're getting you know, some, like action steps that you can take yeah. to to carry on with you in life. Yeah, something uplifting. Yes. Like Upwell the Podcast. Like Upwell the Podcast. Yes. <laughs> Oh, this is so good Plug, today. shameless. So, I know. <laughs> so good. Share this out with your family and friends, you guys, because I think that was some really great actionable mm-hmm. things. You know, we talked about managing stress versus running away from it, you know, yeah. and gave you some actual tactical things mm-hmm. that you can utilize um, if you don't already in your life. I agree. Yeah. Well... I think that's it for today. I think so. All righty. So thank you so much for joining us on another episode of Upwell the Podcast. If you liked what you heard today, please be sure to like, share, comment, spread it out to the universe. Uh, Let everybody know that you enjoyed the show today. So you can find us on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, at Upwell the Podcast. You can find myself personally at barefoot.katie. You can find Sarah at Sarah Barron. So until next time, take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and take care of the world around you. Bye, guys. Bye.